Hey Naturally Curly World, I'm Christina. I'm Gerilyn. And today we're talking about why you should shampoo. What are shampoos? What are the chemicals inside of them? Why do we need them? We're gonna get down to it in this episode. Shampoo is a product that we use to cleanse our hair. It typically contains surfactants. Some surfactants are harsher than others. It's kind of a big, bad, scary word in the curly world, but the truth is we do need to cleanse our hair and the whole thing about shampoos is you want to remove the product residue and the dirt and the sweat, but you don't want to remove the oils and the natural moisturizing properties that come out of our scalp. What you use to cleanse your hair will be different from what I use. We don't all need to use sulfates, but some people do. Yeah, I actually really like using sulfate-based shampoos because I know for sure all of the product that I've been wearing is just gonna come right off of my hair strands. I need it to help my hair stay healthy and to help it grow. Yeah, normally a shampoo will contain a surfactant ingredient and a co-surfactant ingredient. Surfactants that a lot of us know are sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate or SLS. We often see that as like the big scary sulfate. Um, and then the co-surfactant is cocamidopropyl betaine. Yeah. Did I get that? She said it right. No. Yes, yes I did. You did. Also, what I like to do, and I don't know if you do this too, whenever I have a shampoo, I like to detangle when I shampoo. So I'll take a wide tooth comb and I'll start at the top or the end of my hair and work myself down to the roots. I like doing that to make sure that all of my curls are free of the product that was once in them. I don't detangle when I have shampoo in, but I do use a scalp brush. So that's like a round, flat brush with these short little bristles and I like to um, apply the shampoo and then take the scalp brush, it has like a ring for your finger, and just rub it back and forth ever so slightly. And for me, that just feels good, but also it stimulates the scalp and kind of helps um, agitate and remove the dirt. So there are a few different types of shampoo. The one that a lot of people use is the liquid shampoo, but there's also a shampoo bar and dry shampoo. So I like suds. Yeah. That's how, I feel like my hair is clean when it has suds, but tell us a little bit more about the shampoos that don't suds up. If you're using like a no poo or something that doesn't contain any sulfates, you may not get that sudsy, bubbly, curlies call it squeaky clean feeling because that can feel dry or drying to some people. I haven't used a shampoo bar yet. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so it looks like a soap bar and I tried one, I didn't love it, not because I didn't love the shampoo, but I just didn't like having to rub the little bar all over your head. And I just found that it was a little bit more time consuming to apply it to my scalp because I did have to like rub it and get it all over. But a liquid, I felt like it was just easy to kind of cover my whole scalp in just a few seconds. But some people really do love shampoo bars. I would assume that if you have very dense hair and it's hard to get product to your scalp, then something like a shampoo bar would be useful because you're actually making contact with your scalp. And then another product application that I love is when they have like the pointed nozzle. Yes. That is so helpful because when you're shampooing, you really want to be cleaning your scalp, but you don't really want to get shampoo on like the ends of your hair because they're already more fragile and dry. You're really focusing the product on your scalp and that pointy applicator helps you do that. Yeah, there's a really good apple cider root rinse that I really, really love. It has that awesome nozzle so I can just drive it onto my scalp just up and down and it's awesome. I absolutely love that. I have an itchy scalp, so the scalp brush products where I'm like putting it onto my scalp, I like that. Mm -hmm. Ally K Naturals also has a really good pointed applicator and girl plus hair or girl and hair, they girl also have hair. one. Also, there's dry shampoos. So women like me that have type four hair, super dense, coarse in a lot of places on my head, we don't really like using dry shampoo. However, I did use one one time and it worked too well. 
it actually took all of the moisture, all of the oils out of my scalp and it was a nightmare for me. But there are a lot of people that absolutely swear by them and for those people I say, keep it up, keep doing you. If you love dry shampoos, use them. Maybe if you have really fine hair or really loosely wavy hair, maybe that's something you're using to help stretch out the days in between wash days, but they don't clean your hair. So <laughs> if you really need to clean your hair, go ahead and use a regular shampoo because a dry shampoo is not really gonna do that. So the most important part of picking out your shampoo is to turn over the product and read the label. Those ingredients are going to tell you everything that you need to know and don't just trust that because it's sold in a store, it's gonna be good for you because in the US we only ban 11 ingredients from shampoos, but in Canada it's over 500 and in Europe it's like 1300. So really get to know your labels. I feel like that is the most important part of really choosing any product that you're putting on your hair. Absolutely, and before you actually go full throttle and put the shampoo on your scalp and your hair, do a small sample test on your skin, maybe even on the inside of your elbow where it's really sensitive, just a little wipe down, and just see if there's some sort of reaction, don't use that product. Um, yeah, so definitely test it first. Yeah, we'll leave an article below that has more information about ingredients because those names can be really long and we're not gonna talk about them all right now, but you can find, the good thing is you can seek out that kind of information fairly easily. So you've probably heard about the no poo movement. If you have not heard about that, it's essentially where people are not using traditional types of shampoos or shampoo bars, but they're using alternative ingredients to cleanse their hair and to cleanse their scalp, such as baking soda, um, apple, cider, apple vinegar. cider vinegar, various oils, so that they aren't being harsh to their scalp and they're not being harsh on their strands. Uh, they just wanna make sure their alternative is very gentle. It's to do with your pH level. So if you're gonna use something like baking soda on your hair, then you're going to want to use apple cider vinegar afterwards because that's acidic or lemon. Baking soda and apple cider vinegar can actually be quite harsh on your hair. So some people use these and love them and if you do, then just keep using them, but some people find that it can be kind of harsh on the strands. Yeah, I would imagine that if you are using those natural methods to clean your hair, you're gonna have to add in so much more moisture in the whole conditioning, deep conditioning process. So that's kind of a challenge for you too. Be careful about the ingredients that you select because you actually might be causing a longer wash day for yourself in the very end. Yeah, it is super important to shampoo, but if you find that it's very drying for you, then I would recommend doing a pre-poo. So a lot of naturals will do like an oil pre-poo or some sort of deep conditioning pre-poo so that they're putting a lot of moisture into their hair before they're gonna cleanse and remove more moisture along with the dirt. So if you have questions about shampoo, let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, definitely check us out next season when we answer more crazy scientific curl questions. Bye. Bye.